Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Crystal. And this is NF, NF Geeks. Geeks. All right, Crystal, thank you so much. I'm so happy for you to come on. Know. You know, it's always good to have, you know, I always need more women to and come ENTPs, on. ENTPs, so you know. Yes, know. that's right. So this is a great moment because we have an ENTP, another ENTP, mm -hmm. all right, uh, and a woman, even better. Okay. Really? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what I want to do is I want to talk about um, ENTP. I'm going to ask you some things, and you can just reflect on them, and we'll talk about being an, N an NT. All right. Okay, so um, one uh, strength of ENTPs is that they're very innovative um, because they have the ability to kind of see the way something should be in terms of systems, technology, whatever. Um, very inventive um, in terms of business. A lot of entrepreneurs are actually ENTPs. And um, so what do you think about that and how does that connect with your life, being um, uh, in a, an innovator? Honestly, I like, when it comes to like, if something's broken, I have to fix it. Ah. I have to make sure it's perfect, and I have to fix it. Like, one of the things I like to do is, uh, recently, we got a real tree. So I took the plastic tree and made a bunch of little bushels and hung them around my house <laughs> as little, like, decorations. I was so bored. I was like, I just got bored. <laughs> All right. Decorated. And being able to sort of see it the way it yeah. could be. And, like, one thing I noticed about people is, like, like, the theory of relativity, for instance. It was explained to me in class once, and... I completely understood it with no problems. Mm. The theory of special relativity, no problems. And like everybody's like, how do you do that? I'm like, you can't just see it? It's easy. It's open. It's right there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's because, like, also, I have dyslexia, so when I do math, the numbers just rearrange on me. So mm. I can actually do math, like, rapidly. Oh, wow. So, yeah. What about, um, you know, ENTPs, uh, like INTPs, are known for having an introverted thinking having a sort of a thought process that's uh, that's not sort of talked outward, but sort of going on uh, inward. Uh, what, what can you uh, I'm think I'm constantly thinking, actually. If I'm not talking, I'm thinking. And if I'm quiet, I'm thinking. If I'm doing anything, I'm most likely thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always thinking. So there's not a lot of spacing out. No, like, the, sometimes I space out, but it looks like I'm spacing out, but I'm actually deep in thought. And whatever my mind is, my mind's just going this way, that way, this way. I'm just trying to figure out which way it is. Oh. So... It's a pretty interesting thing. My head's interesting. <laughs> actually, like, one of the questions I ask everybody for shits and giggles, what's the square root of pi? And I actually did it one day because I had to find out. It was 1.7. It's 1.7 something. And when I did it, I was like, I have to figure this out because it's just bothering me. It's very nerdy. Why would you <laughs> want to figure that out? What's the... Because it's just, like, random stuff. Like, I like going up to people just asking them random math questions because it's fun. Math is fun to me. I love it. Math is fun. There yeah, math go. is fun. That's great. That's why I want to take differential calculus. That's why I want to go as hard as I can. I wish I could just skip trigonometry, which I can't, so I'm stuck with cal I'm stuck with trig next, like hopefully next semester. Uh, how do you feel you're going to do with trig? Oh, I think I'm going to ace it. I, really? sl I slept throughout pre-cal and I aced it. Oh, wow. Jeez, boy. <laughs> yeah, it was easy. Oh, well, that's math. good. Math and science. I don't think I've ever failed any sciences class, like, unless I, you know, skip the class. I never <laughs> failed the science class. Never failed a math class. I have never failed a math test in my life. Mm. Never got lower than an A. Because I'm crazy like that. No, that's wonderful. That's great. What's your major, by the way? I'm doing, I want to be a professor of math and science. Oh, wow. So I'm doing liberal arts science option, but I want to be a professor of math and science. Oh, that's And perfect. you also have to go all the way to calculus, and I can't wait, because I love calculus. No. Oh, love math. Yay, calculus. Woo! Right? Yeah. Can't wait. I'm also going to take ethics. I oh, like good. I like philosophy. Good. And ethics. So I teach good. ethics sometimes. I know. I'm going to look for you. Yeah. What, um, um, all right, so let's, let's talk about uh, a trait that sometimes people get upset about, and that is, is that ENTPs are known to be a little, and I'll expand on this, a little argumentative. Oh, yes. Okay, so, um. You say, like, you say tomato, I say tomato. Yes. Um, what, what do you, all right, so just talk about that. When does, um. When do you find yourself, let's start here, when do you find yourself being argumentative? Is there anything that triggers it? or? Honestly, if I have a differing opinion, that's it. That's it triggers it. it. No, no, you don't have to be aggressive. You can be calm, rational. 
but the second you have a different opinion, I'm debating. Okay. And I debate with everybody though. Like if you say if you say the sky is blue, I'm gonna say it's green. Just to, like I can debate any subject on both sides because I like to do that. Hmm. It's hard for me to debate certain subjects on both sides, but I can do it. Like I can use the arguments I've used, I've had used against me against other people. Hmm. Like I debated communism with you and I'm not even a communist. No, oh, right, but not even a communist. I debated it. Although, um, let's I talk about that when, because um, one, uh, the other thing about argumentativeness, but it was comical from my position up here, is that um, one of the, some one of the other students in class sitting in the back was sort of being very uh, libertarian oh my God. in their view. And you, uh, went ballistic on him, you went mm -hmm. crazy on him, and then, all right, well, then I'll, t I'll talk about what you did after that, but can you talk about that moment, because that was a comical I just moment. hate when people have an opinion that I think is completely wrong, especially if I completely disagree with it. Like, if I completely disagree with it, I'm going to argue with you, and if, if you're saying something that I find offensive, so help you God. I debate online. I'm, that's what I do. Right. It's my pastime. So did you feel that you were being argumentative in that moment? Like, what was your... Yes, I was definitely what argumentative. Was your... what was, I was less calm debating, more shut the hell up, I'm right. Yeah, I can see that. I'm out right. I'm out right. I'm right about that. Yeah. Now, um, ENTPs are also kind of known to be a little uh, sarcastic Oh, and, yes, I'm always witty. sarcastic. Yes, so... <laughs> The next class, like the very next class, you came in with like this communist sweatshirt that had like oh, yeah. this hammer and sickle on it. It was I just red. Had to wear it. Like like the very next class, right after this, like the like it was the argument was on a Tuesday. This was a Thursday. Was a, yep. You came in dressed in your communist gear. Yep. All right. So how comment on that? Well, if it's you like can. my husband's like, oh, you debated for communism. Here, wear this shirt. Like, and it's his shirt, so I wore it. I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna wear the CCCP shirt. All right. It's kind of funny that says initials, so it kind of works. Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah, I just decided to wear it because, like, I debate in that that debate. I debate. I debated my husband's side of the argument versus capitalism because me and my husband debate a lot on capitalism versus communism, and I'm more commun. I'm more capitalistic, but now he says I'm a Marxist. Again, just to uh, why does he say that you're a Marxist? Because like Marx's ideals and me like agree. <laughs> Is he a Marxist? No, he's a Leninist. A Leninist. Not a Stalinist. People confuse those two all the time. It's sad. It happens all the time. Yeah, it does. Yes. I see it all the time, like, on debates and everything. Like, just all right, well, uh, tell us, what do you think, what is the difference for the audience? Like, a Stalinist is somebody who believes, like, Leninist is more about free exchange. Stalinists, like, Leninists have more of an open, they actually support an open market in certain aspects. Like, they do support an open market because they're just not, like, as controlling. But Stalinist is like, I will wipe the Hobbesian. I will wipe you out for the good, the, if I think you're a threat to me. Nice Machiavellian, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> and this is wrong because, why? It's just, it makes people think, it doesn't help that Stalin was like that crap crazy. Like, he got paranoid of the science and bandaged them to Kazakhstan. Yeah. So he like, he eliminated people. Like, you can have communism without being, you know, that crap crazy. He also wiped out Trotsky. He killed That's Trotsky. That's true, right. Trotsky it, all, was the a way, to, all the way to Mexico. Yeah, he, yeah. he, he uh, he pushed Trotsky like out, and Trotsky was the one that followed Lenin's ideals more thoroughly. I mean, if Lenin lived longer, we'd probably see more progress. But like, look at communism. Like back in the 1900s, they had women had more rights than they did in America, and we're supposed to be the more progressive country. We didn't. We weren't. Women didn't fight in the front line. We just have women fighting in the front line now. Back in Russia, they had women fighting in the front line since World War One. Huh? Right in, yeah. Let's go in right there. What, um, what do you argue about online? Like, what kind of forums are you on, and what's your it's usual? A honestly, a debate forum, and I'm always liberal and pro-women rights. Oh. I'm incredibly pro-women rights. Like, I'll debate until the end of the day I die for women's rights. No problem with it. I'm also very anti-circumcision. Get out. I didn't know that. Yes. Why is that? Bodily autonomy. It's my argument for pro-women's rights, my bodily for uh, circumcision, because circumcision is not medically indicated. Why do we need it? You don't. You definitely don't. It's not. It's just that we're, we're in this country. It's more like a program into us that we need to do it because it's, you know, the vase. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I think of it, the vase. There you go. That's with the vase. All right, let's talk about some, um, some NT stuff. And one thing I want you to talk about, usually I say this for the end, but I think you'd have a lot to say, 
is that um, a lot of NTs in terms of relationships, like intimate relationships, are looking for um, a mind mate, someone who is intellectually yeah. as smart as them, or at least... Uh, could as, compete with me. Right, so that you could share ideas and go back with ideas. And, and they so, also have to not be so rigid. Like, rigid rigidity is like one thing I can't take. Like, my husband's more flexible. He's more open to hearing arguments, and he's intelligent. He's open to hearing arguments and could make me reevaluate everything I'm saying. Yeah, and so you're both two. So he's an INTJ. No, INFJ. Oh, an INFJ. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Because um, I would say INFJ ENTP is a very good relationship. Yeah. Um, so would you still consider him? So even though he's an NF, uh, he do you consider? He's incredibly intelligent. So do you find him to be a good mind mate in the sense yes. that like you can, can talk to like, him? Well, like certain things need him. He can't. He doesn't understand math and physics like me. It's just that he's moral issues. He's definitely on the higher ground. Hmm. I'm more, you can say, ruthless when it comes to morality things, like issues that involve any type of morality. There's no, there's no, like, playing around with it. Wow. I can understand, like, I can understand, understand you know, defending a serial killer in court and stuff like that. I can wow. actually justify random things that, he's like, you're just trying to justify it. I'm like, damn straight, that's what I do. Yep. That's right, like a good uh, NT yeah. and a good that's, ENTP, that's, that's no less. That's what I do. I justify everything I do. Yes. But it's, even though he's an NF, again, you find him to be a mind mate, yes. like you can actually have an uh, intelligent connection. Yes. And he can appreciate your mind. Do you find that he appreciates your yes, mind? Yes, he definitely does. He's the one that's like encouraging me. To, he wants me to go all the way. He wants oh. me to get my doctorate. He wants me to go as far as I can because he knows, like, he feels like I'm going to be successful. And he doesn't want to hold me back in any shape, way, or form. So mm. He's always been the one pushing me. Be my little cheerleader. Well, actually, all right, that, that's great. This leads to the next one because I don't normally get to have... Um, or an NT parent. Uh, you might even be the first um, NT parent on, uh, on NFTs. Yeah. You might even be the first parent, period. I'd have to think about that one. But you're certainly the first NT parent that I can yeah. think of. Um, so NT parents are known to sort of raising their children to be independent thinkers and certainly independent in their way. Not independent in terms of, you know, throwing them to the wolves. Yeah. That kind of independence. But to sort of be independent in their choices and to raise people who can make independent choices as opposed to just sort of following society or anything like that. So does that seem true to you, and how do you do that? Honestly, I'm, with my kids, I strive, like, I'm very, like, I try to teach them to independence from the chance, like, the second they can. They start walking, they start taking, learning how to take care of themselves, because I don't want a child that need on me when they're in their 20s. Like, my oldest is pretty self-sufficient. Like, she's incredibly, she can do Pick, she picks her own clothes, she gets dressed, she can make herself a sandwich, she can make herself like toast, she's learned how to cook eggs, she's like, she's really independent for a set, almost seven year old. And it's because I don't need, I don't want to baby, I don't baby anybody. Mm. I want them to be successful. Like my daughter, for instance, I've been teaching her mathematics. I'm like, I'm like I start math and science from the get go. Mm. They ask me a question, I'll start teaching them. Like my daughter asked me about, what are pine cones, what are they used for? And I explain in detail what exactly they were. She probably lost interest, but got the message across. And every time she asks it, I'll explain it hmm. until she learns it. Because I can't, I don't want her to fall intellectually. Yeah, well, I also well, that's don't, I, I don't want her also to be held back. Like, when I was a kid, I was kind of discouraged from, I wasn't discouraged, but I wasn't praised for my math-like abilities until I was much older. And it really, like, it was more like if I wasn't going to get praised by the health care. I mean, I slacked off in high school, so I like to skip. I hate authority. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Hates authority. All right, well, um, that's just about a, a time. Do you have anything uh, you want to uh, add to any of this about being an NT or an ENTP? They definitely procrastinate. Really? I think I owe you all the assignments. Still, really? <laughs> so you're procrastinating? Yes, I'm procrastinating. I can't. I can't yeah, we have a, well, you know, we, time is limited. Yes. You, you have like a week. I know, I have like two, I have like four papers doing another class. <laughs> I'm just like, I can't do it. I can't. Oh, boy. I also have so much energy, and if I'm not physically doing something. You're also late every class. I know. I You're never late always. every class. I, al I always think, like, okay, she's not showing up, but you're I walk right every in. class. But, yeah, I'm always late. I don't yeah. think, I think Very consistent remember, on your lateness. Remember that one time I was early? Remember that? Yes. Nobody showed up, so it was a, it was a coincidence. Like, Brian and Joe, that's who showed up. I was, was the one. Yeah, that was probably an accident, though. No, 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 no. It was an act of God. <laughs> or, it was act of the good, or the world, or math. There we go. It's an act yeah, of math. Yeah, math. Math did math it. Math did it. Yes. All right. Well, Crystal, thank you so much uh, for being on. You know, I appreciate it. 
and uh, you know, uh, make sure you follow NF Geeks on Twitter and Tumblr. And new NF Geeks videos are always uh, every Tuesday night at eight o'clock. And uh, don't forget, it's what is it, Crystal? It's happening. It's happening. Even the NTs know it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. All right. Well, thank you, Crystal. All right.